What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the green room. We are here with Devin and Steven once again. Love welcome, it. welcome. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. You, you brought out the color today. Yeah, you That's know, right. it's my wife loves the shirt. Amen. She does, so. Amen. <laughs> we're we were just we were just talking in there like just the neutrals, like neutrals have taken over. So we're mm-hmm. we're breaking chains just today with this shirt. Bit. Yes. <laughs> yes. We got to step out. I mean, it's still out. mostly neutral, but there's yeah, it's like we'll orange. Pop of light yeah, yeah. orange. Yeah. Yeah. Into a new season. Well, yes. That's right. Amen. I was doing Amen. a new thing. Still with the cast. God bless you. Still with the cast. <laughs> That's right. He's on the way. To re- yes. The road to yes. recovery. Yes. Healing yes. is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Healing. Hey, hey, my God. Careful now. Come on. Care- <laughs> Big, yeah. Careful. Big phrase. Don't take us there. <laughs> We're not ready. <laughs> um, what's going on? What else is new in y'all's lives? What's happening? Uh, anything? Let's just catch up, you know? Man. <laughs> uh, so life is great. Uh, yep. Standing really, really, really busy. Um I think I talked about my kids the last time, mm-hmm. so I'll give you yeah, a kid yeah, update. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My boys, both my boys play football. Oh, okay, um, okay. And so uh, our our house is like three, four nights a week, football practice, Saturday games everywhere. Sheesh. Generally, if it's an away game, they're an opposite end. So I think last week we were in Muskogee. Mm. Naomi was in like oh, wow. Bartlesville somewhere. So it's, oh, it oh, is man. a project yeah. every yeah. weekend. Yeah. And then, you know, we got service on Saturday yeah. night mm-hmm. too. So God mm-hmm. bless you. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> God bless you. We'll be Jeez. sending special prayer for I energy and stamina. It. I receive it. Mm-hmm. Supernatural. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. We, um, our daughter's five months old now. Yeah. Is so, like, desperately wanting to crawl. Oh, mm-hmm. so badly. But, like, she's not even sitting up yet. She, yeah. She but can, like, sit up kind of. Is it like just... the, I can't contain the excitement, yes. I just yes. gotta move she, kind yes. of thing. Like, wiggling constantly. Yeah, like, <laughs> legs How do I get this even, to like, go? Even, like, when she's eating, she's still, like, yeah. trying to, I'm like, stop it. You're, just stop. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're trying to teach so her there's close. a time and a place. Yeah. <laughs> she can scoot backwards, You'll though. Hear the, the, the seat time and harvest. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Right. yeah. As if she can understand me. Yeah. But that's so amazing. She's learned to like scoot herself backwards. We just yeah. haven't really mastered forwards. Yeah. Yeah. It'll happen really later. To watch. I'm telling you, it'll happen. Yeah. It, it'll click. She'll figure it out. And when she does, there's no stopping it. She's going to be able <laughs> to. Yeah. I'm very excited for that day, though. Like, that's gonna I think it's going to be fun. It's so amazing, like, seeing things connect. Because, like, we don't have control over it. It, like, right. it just will happen in an instant. Or, like, she'll just wake up one day doing, like, a yeah. new thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wild. Yeah. And wild. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I remember the first time um, <clears throat> Miguel, our youngest, uh, who's eight now, uh, figured out how to climb out of his crib. Uh. Um, and... <laughs> We caught him one day. Like uh-huh. I mean, literally, we, I have a picture of my, with him hanging over the crib, like like he's a little mini Tom Hanks on the side of a building or something. Tom Cruise, you were Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise. Yeah, yes. trying to come down. It's crazy. Yeah. So they figured it out. They put it together. Like, oh, wait a second. If I do, th- here yes. we go. There it is. Here it is. It's yeah. amazing. Amazing. It's How's yeah. your newlywed yeah. life? Newlywed life is amazing. Um, yeah, especially with this cast, it's like, I'm so thankful for my wife, you know, <laughs> she has two working hands, you yeah, know, give us a scenario. What has she done? Um, I mean, you know, she already like had a good insight into what I should wear and now it's, you know, <laughs> you it's more hands on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like we that shirt. It. I'm not helping. No. Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> I love it. No, we're going to yeah. do something else. Today. That's Amazing. right. That's right. But, uh, yeah. And we just moved into a new house. Um, this is our first house as oh, a nice. couple. Fantastic. Awesome. So three months ago, which is a huge blessing. We're mm. so thankful for it. Mm-hmm. Um, we are right at that cusp though. Where now the the cracks in the house are showing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, mm, why it is happens. the dryer not working? Let's yep. check it out. Oh, there's a bird's nest in the bed. Oh, that, that'll do it. Guess yeah, that's that'll been there a while. Wow. You know? that, isn't that so crazy? For us, it was like a year long process when we first bought our house. Like a year, nothing happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was perfect. Bliss. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something and then, and one day, and then everything just like. And then it, it was apart. just like one thing after another for the next like two yeah. years. Yes. <laughs> Both heard, water I, heaters. Yeah. Out. Yeah. AC out, foundation issues there, mm-hmm. leaks in the ceiling, yeah. hot yeah. during yeah. the summer. We've like, mm-hmm. slowly like we've replaced every single appliance except our <laughs> fridge, so we're expecting that to break next. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot but, about the appliances breaking. Yeah. It just like was. Sorry, I mm. don't mean to discourage no. you, but <laughs> no. Hopefully that's that won't. It, right? Yes. Hopefully yeah. it's not that extreme. No. Uh, <laughs> but that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. Is starting to discover like. 
ooh, you know, that that might not be set up correctly. Or, yeah. um, hey, I, I noticed they updated the, the electrical wiring in most of the house, uh, but not this room. Mm. Sure. You know? sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. 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 Our, yeah, yours will probably be not as bad. We Our house is over 120 years old, and so oh, there's a lot of quirks yeah. that yeah. come with that. Lots. So, Which so is unique. so incredible. I, I love history. Yeah. yeah. And so when I hear that, I'm thinking, that's amazing, and that's also like – terrifying it, it, yeah. I'm like what were they building with yes. 120 years ago <laughs> yeah. exactly I will say like we've uh, the wood like that they used is still in there and Gosh. we like we've like attached some like, lighting fixtures and stuff and it is like petrified like <laughs> solid like, wood right <laughs> yeah, so like there it's I mean the house is still standing so that speaks to some yeah. something of quality 120 years yeah. I don't think we'll buy a house as old ever no. again though <laughs> it's fun for a while and, yeah. fun. and then not that's so awesome yeah. but like with 120 years only six owners including yeah. us yeah we know wow. like the full history of the house isn't that wild that's cool oh my gosh yeah, yeah. so it's, it's pretty cool it's, it's cool to get to look into it. Um, getting into today, like I said in the, the last episode, we've, uh, we've been working on uh, or working through some questions, concerns, issues, uh, topics from our campuses, from other worship pastors. And another theme I saw was like green room culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you build a great green room? Uh, how do you inspire people to, um, to, to not just treat this like a job for a paycheck as we contract our musicians, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The questions along that line. So I'd love to just like open up this since we're <laughs> in the green room. Let's let's talk about the the green rooms in our own campuses yeah, and team um, culture. Yes, yeah. team culture and and all of that. What it's like to build a great team and what things y'all have learned and uh, mm-hmm. things that you are working on because that's like that's a ever growing thing, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, let's open it up. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I know for me, um, it was actually something, uh, one of the first things I was like, all right, this is something I need to start pouring into as soon as I got to my campus. Mm -hmm. Um, because there was just a, a, almost a tangible sense of just like a lot of pretense in Mm -hmm. the air as soon as you walked into the green room. Um, and you know, like you said, we have, we have contractors and so they can be, you know, anywhere along this spectrum of, of like, what is their level of buy-in, you know, um, where are they at personally? And, uh, just, you know, one of the things that I noticed with my campus was there was a lot of systems in place that were good systems, great Mm -hmm. ideas, and probably served that season, but we're not for this season. Right. Um, so one of those being like, we, we would have a, uh, after the 10 AM service, right. Um, it was a sit down and like everybody talk about their feelings kind of mm-hmm. set up. And, and I just noticed as we're going around the room, everybody's like, nobody's really bought in. Nobody really cares. Like, mm. it's just like, kind of this. You don't like feelings, Steve? Yeah. Do you have a problem with feelings? I love, I love feelings. <laughs> I love digging into them. But in that setting. <laughs> yeah. The feeling was it, awkward. It felt that was the feeling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it felt forced. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very forced. Um, and so, you know, it, and it's like, I guess I could take a diff- couple different approaches to this. We could mm-hmm. rebuild this, whatever. But at that point, it was like, no, this is just not a system that serves us in this, mm-hmm. you know, in this season. And so let's figure out what, what systems do to actually mm-hmm. build uh, toward what that system was probably intended for. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, you know, so kind of shut that down, but but really the number one thing it started for with me is let me build relationships yeah. with yeah. the people yeah, in it. this room. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, let me schedule one-on-ones every, yeah. you know, that's every good. single person or um, or like if it was female, me and my wife, you know, and that, you know, that kind of deal. Um, and, and as I begin to do that, it's, it's crazy because you don't expect it to happen as quick, I think, mm-hmm. as, it, as mm-hmm. it can mm-hmm. or as it mm-hmm. does. Um, cause literally you'll leave a one-on-one and suddenly that person's demeanor in, in the green room or, or just, I mean, when they're serving, when they're around you, it's all Completely sudden, different. Yeah. totally yeah. different yeah. after yeah. that one yeah. meeting, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that, that was kind of the process that, that I started off, you know? For, yeah. About. For me, it, it has everything to do with relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, y- you want to know the people that you're going into battle with. Mm-hmm. I want to know your story. Mm-hmm. I want to know your family. I want to know what motivates you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, I want you to know that I'm for you and not against you. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, as, as leaders, 
we can have a perception that we have it all together all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And if that's your MO, if that's the type of leader you want to try to be, um, you don't leave very much room for authenticity. And that that can become very exhausting. And so one of the things that was most valuable for me, um, and I had a very seasoned team. I mean, Mm -hmm. a team that is at my location, they launched that location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, They were so... They, South Tulsa has been around for a minute. Too. It, they ha- it has, and, and they're they're bought in. But at the same time, um, I never took for granted their level of buy-in. I wanted to make sure that God bringing me there, Lord, what do you want to do in this in this season with these individuals that you've trusted me to lead? Mm-hmm. And so um, we just, I was just vulnerable with them uh, mm-hmm. with different things in my life, and and it gave permission um, for them to do the same, and it it released the desire or, or I guess the, the, how do you say the, the notion of feeling like you have to have it all together. Like mm-hmm. I have to present in this way all the time. Mm-hmm. And when those barriers started to come down, it made laughing at things super easy. It yeah. made, you mm-hmm. know, Hey, what are your thoughts on this? Or here's something I'm dealing with mm-hmm. with my daughter, or I went through the, and you realize that what you're doing is life together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And it just happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. That's good. I, um, I haven't been a worship pastor in the seat that you guys are in for a few years now, but when I was, um, I was the worship pastor at the campus that Rob now gets to pastor at, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Cause I still get to be a part of their lives and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I came in, it was on the tails of another worship pastor who had left. And, um, there was just this kind of, again, very seasoned team, first of all, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. had great relationships with each other. Um, but there was a very, sharp divide between the worship team and like the people who are on stage and then the tech team who made everything happen. It was mm-hmm. like the two almost never crossed yep. paths, mm-hmm. which yep. is weird to me because we're all one team, like mm-hmm. um, at least in the life church context. And I'm sure probably most contexts like worship and tech are led in the same, mm-hmm. by together. the same people. They are married. <laughs> yes. And I, I believe they're mm-hmm. firmly interwoven. So one of the things that I just started doing, um, we actually did have the the ten o'clock feelings time. Yeah. I think we've <laughs> which, all done that. We, yeah, no tech we call it a no tech ten. Yep. That's and what it was. Meaning, and and I had to rename it because no tech to a tech person sounds it's like. like sorry, are you what? saying I'm not allowed yeah. in there? Yeah. What it means is like put the phone down. Yeah. No yeah. phone technology. Um, so we would just have like our ten o'clock just hang time, and we would talk about our lives and the things that we were struggling with, things that were going well. Um, and so we would invite the tech team members into that, um, as best we could in that time. And, um, just getting to like spend that time where everyone got to hear like what was going on in each other's lives in a way they might not ordinarily was, was really, really great for building depth to the relationships that had existed very like cordially at the surface for a long time. Um, and so that was important. And then another thing, like they almost never prayed together outside of like the huddle. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's very important time, mm-hmm. the huddle, like at the beginning of rehearsal, like we're casting vision for the weekend, all that. Um, but there was never a time to just like sit and pray over like the different things that they were going mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. And so that's where it kind of just began. And then from there, I was it blew me away, like you were saying, how fast things change when you just start to pour intentionality into yeah. those mm-hmm. relationships, because suddenly I noticed like they were hanging out outside of the green room. <laughs> like yeah. they were hanging out outside of the weekend. Uh, they were developing relations, like their kids were hanging out. Like just, just more and more depth was, was coming just from that Absolutely. small act mm-hmm. of intentionality to now at, at this point, like things have just grown over time and under Rob's leadership, even like there's such a culture at our campus where like if a new person comes on the team, even if Rob and I are not the first person, which we usually are mm-hmm. because we are, we just care about this so much. But like even if we weren't to be the first person to like bring them into the fold, so to speak, the whole team would come around them and do that yeah. Yeah, that's true. immediately <clears throat> um, because there's a culture of we are a family. We do this together. Um, there are people who will like host the gatherings and like yeah. that's like their bread and butter. And like yeah. there's just so much family about it. But it takes time and it takes yeah, it pouring. It, in. Does. it <laughs> takes facilitating and creating um, the scenarios in which people connect to each other mm-hmm. that God then uses mm-hmm. outside yeah. of your influence. 
Yeah, yeah that's mm-hmm. so good. I definitely got to reap a harvest that she sowed. Hey. <laughs> ah, and I just think it's cool that we get to like do that together. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Not everyone gets it's that. True. It's true. It's mm-hmm. true. Uh, for, for me, you know, we talked about this a little bit in the last episode, but like what's the why? What are we here to do? Mm-hmm. Right. As Everything has to stem from there and knowing that. if So we're here to – our mission as a church is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The Great Commission says that we make teachers and disciples, mm-hmm. you know, that we are to love others as – so that I have – the do is very clear, right? Mm-hmm. So if I want to see that happen on my stage to this mass group of people that comes in every weekend, that has to exist before that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. If I want that to happen in the people that come, mm-hmm. it has to exist in my personal life and on the life of our team because we're right. all leaders, right? Mm-hmm. We're we're all just because I have the title of pastor and they don't does not mean that they are any less shepherding than I am. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. They are. Um, so it's understanding that this is what we're here to do, to shepherd, to take care, to love, to, to, to equip, to, to teach, to make disciples. So that Mm -hmm. has to exist in the green room Mm -hmm. before it even touches the platform. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it centers around that. So uh, this the green room culture is like one of my favorite things to do Mm -hmm. because it is about the people, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is not. We believe that the church is the people and right. not, and not the structure. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not the systems. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. the equipment or your LED wall. Like that's not yeah. the that's not the church. It's the people. So yep. I want I'm in I am intentionally every day thinking about the people. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. are they? Uh what are they coming from? What is mm-hmm. their story? Where mm-hmm. are they with Jesus? How and, can we come around? And how can word? I come yeah. alongside yeah. that? And uh I'm, I'll admit I try to be really aggressive mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. And one one characteristic that's really helped me is curiosity. Mm-hmm. Are you curious mm-hmm. about your people? Why they do the things they do? Why are they even here? Um, where where they come from? Where are they going? What's their end game? What are yeah. their dreams? Their mm-hmm. passions? Their mm-hmm. you know their everything? What's their family like? Like the the whole thing. So I, I dive right in with the mm-hmm. questions mm-hmm. all the time, even if I've known them for a while. What's going on? What's happening? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I broadcast that to the rest of the team. Mm. Uh, so and so said this. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So like I'm I'm pretty aggressive, strategically <laughs> yeah. networking yeah. based yeah, off yeah. Of it, yes. recon and networking. Yes, yeah. So yeah. that everyone is aware. Yes, and you're you're stoking the fire of the infrastructure. Always mm-hmm. stoking, like yeah, constantly yeah, 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 trying yeah. to, yeah. you know, um, to 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 let that light kind of come through, and yeah. and for us to mm-hmm. come alongside that. Um, and then like bring humor to that, bring sarcasm to that, bring like, yeah. uh, you know, like, oh, so, oh, you're from this area. So you must. Okay. What's, interesting. what's a green room without a good meme? That's you know, what I'm saying. Saying. Like, you know yeah. of the people. Yeah. You know? have some inside jokes. Yeah. Yes. The inside jokes. Yeah. Like yeah. we're going to, we're going to like make friends. Yeah. Isn't <laughs> like, yeah. that's really Imagine all it that, is. Right? It, that's really all it yeah. is for yeah. me. Yeah. I, I remember being in high school and. I, you know, I, as we all do, like I love hanging out with friends and making memories. I'm like, man, I wish I could just get paid to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what I want to do with my life. I don't want to work. I don't want to do it. I just want to <laughs> do this. That sounds like really lazy and dumb. Mm-hmm. But when I realize now, like, I, that's what I get paid to do. Bro, mm-hmm. it, it's people. Yeah. It's that's people. Right. Yeah. It's people like this is yeah. everything. Yeah. And so knowing that if this green, this room centers around that loves one another, that the fruits of the spirit are being mm-hmm. produced here, mm-hmm. the worship's going to be crazy strong. Right. That. Yeah. Right. And they're going to start leading other people yeah. out yeah. here. So it's it. I'm 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 looking for how how do we grow fruit in here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rob, exactly to the point you're saying, you know, about like. Man, what I want for the congregation, the people in this room, Mm -hmm. man, I got to want it for the people on the stage, for the people in the green room. Um, I had a moment four or five months ago uh, of just realization of like, man, how much time am I really devoting to my team, to Mm -hmm. my, you know, to the band members that, uh, because our campus had started um, just really trying to get new families, people who walk in the, the front door for the first time connected. And so, you know, we developed a system, use Monday board, like, all right, every person who walks through the door, they're going to get, you know, a touch point with at least two pastors. Mm-hmm. And those pastors are going to um, call them or text them or have a conversation with them at least three times, you yeah. know, all these different things. And I had a moment of realization while I was doing that, man, do I keep in touch with my band members mm-hmm. this much? Mm-hmm. 
do I make this much of an effort for, if I'm making this much of an effort and every person's valuable, obviously, but I'm making this much of an effort just to get somebody like, man, plugged in to the church. What about the person that serves alongside me, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, at least two times a week, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, am I making the same effort for them to have them plugged into yes, community? Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I like, I think it's so important the, the relational side, what it does is it, it, it takes away the feeling of, because we do ask a lot of our volunteers. For even. sure. Like Lots we, of we ask, we have a high level excellence, execution, like all the things, yeah. expectations are high, whether you're a paid contractor or a volunteer. <clears throat> um, and if you don't have a relationship, it feels like you're just taking, mm-hmm. like using mm-hmm. and asking and, yep. and it's, yep. we don't ever want people to feel like that because that's yeah. not what we're, right. that's not the sure. heart. Mm-hmm. But if there's no relationship there, mm-hmm. that's what it's going to feel you have like. To have that equity. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. when you when you when you talk about that, and we use this language a lot, expectations. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, it's it's everywhere. Let mm-hmm. me set expectations for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that that even that language automatically suggests here here's what you want from me, and here's how you want it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shifting that thought process of here's what you can you here's what you can expect when your time is here. Like mm-hmm. when you're here with us, uh, you can expect community. You can yeah. expect support. Mm-hmm. You can expect yeah, to have good. a great time. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna laugh. Loud, hard, and often. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so shifting that, and it, you know, we talk about a lot what we want for people and not mm-hmm. from them. Yeah, mm-hmm. the same has Always. to be true of our teams. Absolutely. I want this to be. It should be a life group. Yeah, mm-hmm. it Absolutely. literally yeah. should be a life group. Yeah. Absolutely. And the health or the dysfunction of that group mm-hmm. will be clearly displayed on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Clearly, mm-hmm. dis- you, you, what you will find there will be a a disparity of difference between the intentionality and leadership of the worship team and the band. And it, and it will look disconnected versus one movement together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah. is pushing in the same direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you'll go through seasons and, and even with tenure teams where it feels like as a worship pastor, you're pulling. Yeah. And then there's other seasons where you feel like as a team, you guys are pushing. Yeah. Yeah. I think the product of that will be clearly displayed based off of what's happening in the green room mm-hmm. and how tight those relationships are. Yeah. Um, and so redefining, you know, expectations. And even with something like No Tech 10, the heart behind that mm-hmm. is admirable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what you want. But when you come in and set an expectation and a precedent, here's how things work here. Mm-hmm. At, at, without the equity, yes. without mm-hmm. the yeah. curiosity, yeah. Right. Yeah. without putting in the time, energy, and investment to know who are these people? Right. Right. What's your story? Story. Where do you come from? What's yeah. your background? Yeah. And I said it earlier. I want to know the people that I'm doing battle with. Yeah. Absolutely, mm-hmm. it's so critically important. Mm-hmm. And and so when you, and Rob, you hit it on the head, man. That curiosity piece. Yeah. If when you lead with that, um, God will reveal it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He will reveal yeah. the 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 specific prayer needs or the things that you maybe need to ask two and three mm-hmm. questions about yeah. or how is your family and yeah. and what's your rela- like those types of things that says. I've, I appreciate your talent, but your talent is the best. That's the starting point. You know, I want to know who you are and how, and how can I help you become a fully devoted follower of Christ as I'm becoming a fully, and it's, it goes back to what I said earlier, just that humility to expose yourself in a Mm -hmm. way that says, I don't have it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But what I, 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 but I want to, I want to be a Christ follower. I want you to be a Christ follower with me. And guess what? We also get to lead people using our gifting and our ability. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. Mm-hmm. That is so huge. If I'm going to ask vulnerability of them, I got to be vulnerable too. Yeah. There's a there's a healthy level of vulnerability. There is. And then there's oversharing. There, yeah. that, that is very true. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's a real thing. And it can become a liability. Right. It yeah. could absolutely. And I've seen that happen mm-hmm. in green rooms at campuses, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. where a leader becomes a little bit too vulnerable mm-hmm. to their team members. And then the team feels like they got to carry them. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. They're, they're there, there is a dynamic that needs to take place, but I absolutely want them to know what I struggle with too in an appropriate way. Sure, um, you, you know, like hey, you're, you're dealing with this. I've dealt with that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I, I'm kind of trying to fit. Let's figure that out together. Yeah, the equity you are building instant yeah. mm-hmm. with your team to do battle with to make an ask of them. Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. uh, hey, we're doing this extra event. Can you be? It's way easier to ask for right. the extra when they know who you are yeah. yep. and when you found uh, uh founded a a bond together yep. um and and been vulnerable and use vulnerability as a currency within your green room because then yeah. everybody mm-hmm. gets better yeah. through that and it becomes mm-hmm. tighter you know yeah. yeah well in spending that equity i think 
too is is not even just hey can you serve in this higher capacity can yeah. you do this extra event you can also use that equity to like man do you trust me as your pastor to push you in your faith right mm-hmm. um, right hey i want you to come like sit in with me and attend messages together yeah. mm-hmm. or or even the next level that that i'm like working with some of my team members right now hey i noticed you play on your phone a lot during the message mm. what would happen if you tuned in yeah let me spend some of my relational equity to yeah. challenge you to do that. Yeah, let's, let's you know? challenge, yeah. Um, yeah, and that stuff like that. You know, another huge thing for me um, that that I've noticed on my team, so obviously it's my role, right, to set that culture, um, to to really even have the vision of what, what should our culture look like mm-hmm. in the green room. But also, like, I know, man, I can't be the only one carrying yeah. that culture. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so, like, a huge Very moment true. for me of, uh, man, I'm, I'm working, I'm, you know, putting in a lot of hours and just, you know, just trying to build this culture, build these relationships. Yeah. Um, and a huge moment for me was I remember walking off stage one time and our vocalists had already come off stage. They were in the green room and walked in on a conversation of, of one of our leaders, uh, like leading another vocalist, a younger vocalist and, and just like her, her authority on stage and, mm-hmm. and, and just being confident in, in that God has called her to this. And like that moment I was just like, I almost teared up. I was like, oh, it's happening yeah. and it's happening yeah. without me. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. um, and that, go ahead. Go I was going to say that, that moment of knowing that this individual that God has placed on my team mm-hmm. has so much more to offer than mm-hmm. their musical ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you take into consideration how God assembles the teams, mm-hmm. how he's sovereign in all things, yeah. these people stand ready to do ministry in ways that we might not be able to mm-hmm. if Absolutely. they're released to do so, yep. if yep. they receive that yep. authority. 100%. They can speak in the individual, like that unique interaction. That kind of stuff is, that's not happenstance. That is God. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And so your awareness as a leader to see that, we always talk about, um, creating space to um, have people have investment and ownership mm-hmm. in what God is doing in our church. What greater space than in a green room where you see an individual as a as a gifted, talented musician or vocalist, but man, you knowing their story, gosh, man, you know yeah. so much about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Uh-huh. The blood of the lamb, our salvation. The right. word of our testimony, what our story. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Our story. We're made overcomers mm-hmm. by that. Yes. And so releasing uh, the giving permission yeah. for people to do that is right. so critical. It's ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes you just have to get out of the way. Get out of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's everything. not meant for you to do all the things. That Jesus didn't do all the things. No. He could, but yeah. he didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. he recognized the gifting in other people. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Uh, and, and, and as we're talking about, you know, even building teams and, you know, whether it be in the, at the front of house booth or photography and all these different things that we have the opportunity to steward, you recognize that there are those that can do those things better than you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Find them. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Invest in them. Yes. Mm-hmm. And release them. And yeah. release Absolutely, them. yeah. Um, a couple episodes ago, we were talking about, like, developing people. And I think this is another, like, way to think through development of a person it might not always be just like the on stage and, mm-hmm. and like pastoral mm-hmm. things that we would typically think of but also um like developing first of all identifying those things in the individuals on your team hey you have a really great like you're really great at connecting people mm-hmm. you're really great at encouraging people mm-hmm. and giving them like uh, the the empowerment and just the blessing to hey when a new person comes on the team will you will you host them for the first yes. couple of weekends yes. will Absolutely. you connect them to the other ladies on the team like yeah. that on. kind of thing builds so much equity and trust with that individual and then the individuals that they then turn around and have an impact on as they bring them onto the team mm-hmm. like um, having eyes to see all of those like the things that make individuals uniquely gifted, the the things that God has placed inside of them is so key as leaders. Like it's so much more than just talent. It's Mm -hmm. so much more than just the skills that they bring Mm -hmm. to be used on the platform. Um, Though also like having eyes to see like the different ways that they could grow in that is is key and critical. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but the off stage stuff, that's what contributes to um, building a healthy team culture. It's mm-hmm. like seeing them as a holistic, per- like whole yeah. person, mm-hmm. um, and pushing them in that way. Yeah. And it's instant equity and investment from them. Like yeah. if if you want more from me than what I do, like the playing, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. if that. 
the ownership of showing up more prepared, mm-hmm. more prayed up, mm-hmm. more ready to lead. And, I'll, and I'm playing guitar, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. you expect that of me and you need me for that. I can operate in this capacity. Uh, yeah, I just invested more here. Yeah. I got to mm-hmm. be. Now this is my church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm a part of what God is doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll share one thing that I've been doing and then I want to give scenarios mm-hmm. on like how y'all would, mm-hmm. would kind of That's good. Um, handle them. Mm-hmm. So one thing I'm trying to do is is build, like continue that cohesion with the tech team and the worship team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's always a divide. Like the churches I was at before yep. Life Church mm-hmm. and here there's always yep. like this this is this team and this is this team, mm-hmm. right? I'm trying to to bring them together and uh, what I've noticed is there are very two different types of people that want to join these teams. <laughs> <laughs> and they're okay. typically polar mm-hmm. opposites. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it, this is what it is, yeah. right? And there's no shame in that, right? So introverted, behind yeah. the scenes type typically. of people yeah. yep. tend to gravitate towards the tech side, mm-hmm. right? Because they get to hide in a room yeah, or just, behind the booth. Just the yep. wave, like you don't need to come speak yes. to me. No. You just, I'm, and That's they it. contribute, and they contribute. There are people right behind over here. I yeah. see, you know. Yeah, we're <laughs> good. Chris. Yeah. Love y'all. Um, and then there are extroverted people that yeah. don't mind being seen. Right. And uh, <clears throat> sometimes crave that. And that's a whole other conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, But and they join the, the worship team, right? So un- I first had to understand that. Okay, like there are just clear differences. And it's okay that they live in separate worlds because they are separate people, you know. Um, but still, I want to do my very best and at least provide an opportunity. I don't want to leave an opportunity off the table right. for yeah. them to connect. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to put this expectation that the worship team and the tech team are going to be best of friends, always walking hand in hand, singing mm. Kumbaya all day long. But I will always leave an avenue for connection to happen. Yep. Uh, so what I started yeah. doing, and I did this at Northwest too. So OKC is a little bit different. It's a bigger campus, right? We have a broadcast room that they mm. all sit in. Like camera guys, once they're done, they go in and sit. Mm-hmm. Typical campus just has the booth right back sure. there. But mm-hmm. I did this at Northwest as well, where our huddles, so our collective vision casting time happened in their space mm. because mm-hmm. they were not ever going to come to ours. <laughs> yeah. They felt weird coming up on stage. They don't naturally come into the green room between services, right. even when we got food. I'm telling you, like during special events, like we got food all up in there. We got space you for it. You can't drag And them I in tell there. them every you time, can't do it. y'all come to the green There's food in there. Make sure you eat. Come yep. on, come on, come on. They would never come. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go to you then. Yeah, that's And so brilliant. our, our yeah. prayer time And I just, my huddles are just loosely that. Like, we're just going to pray together. If I got something to say, great. We're going to, you know, do that. Some guy even asked to share a story, which was so great. So we go to broadcast. We go to that room and we pray together. And we we leave it up to the Lord to bridge the connections. But there's, I'm always going to create an an Mm -hmm. avenue for that connection Mm -hmm. to happen, you know, even though they're two different types of people. So, but I think it's important in, in there, like, know the story. Yeah. Introverts. Okay. Yeah. And they want to contribute from that posture. And they're not all introverts. They're not all yeah. introverts. Sure. But still, like that that thing, yeah. okay, we love that. So I'm not going to try and ex- you, know, you know put them in a space where they feel unsafe sure. or, yeah. you know, I don't want to force that. Yeah. And so I think we could just give ourselves permission yeah. to just know the stories of these individuals and allow them to serve. But you as the pastor, go and meet them where they mm-hmm. are, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, some scenarios, okay? Uh, what do you do with the contractor... That is clearly just here for a paycheck. Hmm. They're just here to do their job and leave. What do y'all do with that? Um, you know, we've we've talked about it a ton, <laughs> and I'm a, I'm gonna lean on what I do and and kind of my way to to connect with people. And I just I want to know that individual. Mm-hmm. Um, if he's here to perform a task and be compensated. Okay. But I, I what I want to do is intentionally mm-hmm. make it about more than that. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to wherever his corporate job, Hey, let's grab lunch. You know, what's your lunch hour? Do you have time? Yeah. And cool. I make it about everything, but contracting. Mm-hmm. 
And so you start, because if you think about it, someone who typically, and not all the time, but generally somebody who's coming in and this is just what they want to do and they're off to the next thing, typically either a busy personality or they got a lot going on, mm-hmm. um, they they function from a very like, hey, this I've got this time to give and I'll do this and I'm on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. So operate within the framework of that. Mm-hmm. And and, and yeah. it's exactly like what you just said, come to where they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And hey, man, thanks for lunch. And, you know, hey, I'll be praying about what we talked about and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. doing that and making it not at all about, you know, the, the experience on the weekend, you've got to make that investment. That's the work for you to do as that leader mm-hmm. um, is to get to know that individual. And I promise you, um, the more you invest, the more it will become less and less about the thing, mm-hmm. the gig. Yeah. Um, that's just, that's relationship. That's yeah. how it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've gone into so many of those kind of lunches, you know, one-on-ones, where you can tell from the the start of the conversation, they're expecting like, yeah. hey, I'm meeting with you today because yeah, I want to ask more yeah, from yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Here, you're in trouble. Where is it? Yeah. That's or, right. Or you're in yeah. trouble. I've gotten the text before uh, yeah. when I t- send them one on one, like, uh, is everything okay? Is yeah. everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro, everything's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. All good. Yeah. And exactly what you're saying, Devin, you have to break that disillusion of like, oh, he's trying to ask more of me. And oh. it's like, no, I want more for you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's why I'm here. Yeah. yeah. You know, even if that thing is just a friendship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Uh, I have personally not had experience with this, but I do know that at at least in, in an era gone by of life search, there were times where our contractors weren't even Christian. Some of them mm-hmm. where they would be, you know, professional musicians mm-hmm. and we had a need and we would bring them in and contract on a weekend because we need a keys guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I first came to life church, I remember hearing that and being like, that's kind of weird. Like, this is a church, like should my mm. worship teams all be Christians? But what I've come to learn, and and that might be someone who's more like showing up for a gig because right. I mean, if you're not a Christian, right. you're they not here for anything else. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what I love about that is it's still an opportunity to do what you're saying, to like pour into a person mm-hmm. who God created and is he is an image yeah. bearer of God. Yeah. And even though he's not aware yet of mm-hmm. of the relationship that God wants for yeah. him, um, or hasn't said yes to it, like there is an opportunity for ministry in that. And so just with being intentional at, in the developing relationships with everyone as a person mm-hmm. be, before we ever ask anything of them, mm-hmm. like there's an opportunity there to potentially lead someone to the Lord mm-hmm. just through what they thought was a gig because we want yeah. more for them and because we see more in them yeah. and because we take the time to invest in them. And mm-hmm. I would go so far as to say it's a requirement. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's absolutely. required as as a pastor and yeah. as as a leader of this team. If there's a contractor on your team who doesn't know the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, who who wants to come in, do their thing, and be out, what a great opportunity to share the gospel in some shape, form, yeah. or fashion. And I don't mean you know in the traditional way, but man, be the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey. You know, hey, bro, I know you're moving. Do you need a hand with that? Or, yeah. you know, what does that look like? Or, yeah. hey, give me your son's baseball schedule. I'd love to come check a game out or something. Yeah. Just that life, you know, investment mm-hmm. for people mm-hmm. says, this is not what I want from you. Right. It has everything to do with me wanting to get to know you and yeah. know your story. Yeah. And when people recognize that they they are not just going to be used for what they can offer. Yeah immediately those guards go down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, it's shocking in most yes. cases. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so surprising to yeah. them. Yeah. And I like to switch it up. I like to to do the things that you don't expect. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, man, it, we live in such a transactional yeah. world. world. Yeah. 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 Everything is, you give me this, yeah. I will then I will give, give you this. this. Mm-hmm. And if we're if we're honest, some, sometimes we hit life and... I need a transaction, but I don't have anything to give. Mm-hmm. I'm going through this thing, mm-hmm. and if it's if it's always you do this and then I'll do that, it, we got to flip that to where, man, it, I'm gonna be there for you mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna just show up just because I love you. Yeah, and I care about you. Yeah, um, and you don't need to expect anything. Yeah, uh, and I don't expect anything in return. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. just yeah. love people. Yeah, be consistent yeah. and be consistent. Yeah. Be who you yeah. are. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. I, there was a, a guy onboarded a uh, videographer. Mm-hmm. This is a new role on my team. So like there really wasn't like a precedent for mm-hmm. this and we were just trying something new and onboarded. And so um, this is a new relationship with a new 
job, right? So clearly we are here. This is transactional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just because it's new. Um, but I had a secret agenda. Right. Always. Right. <laughs> Single guy. Um, doesn't have a ton of community around him. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, bet you're, you're going to set up in the green room. We're going to be here. Yeah. And we're going to invite you to the Super Bowl party mm-hmm. and we're going to ask about your life. And slowly but surely, you're going to become a part of this mm-hmm. team. And that's exactly and what we has. did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it, it's just those little things. Hey, come hang out with us. Um, and now for sure, I mean, like him and our campus pastor are like really close. They've gotten out to lunch mm-hmm. a few times. Mm-hmm. Like, the, you know, he loves his son. Like it's becoming yeah. so much more than yeah. just a job. And it, I don't think he came in with that expectation. So it was probably a little bit easier. But the point to say it started off here yeah. and with intentionality <clears throat> and awareness. Yeah. We've moved it to something a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. You know, we're just we're just making friends. We're yeah. we're getting to know you, and loving on you. Yeah. And so you t- so you speak to younger worship pastors mm-hmm. who are in a brand new community where maybe there's not a live church, mm-hmm. uh, or not even live church, just a capital C church. Mm-hmm. You go into a space where, gosh, I want that for my team. Mm-hmm. Like that's what that's what I'm doing starting Sunday morning. Here's what we're doing. And I think if you hear anything from this, know that the requirement of entry is investment. From you, mm-hmm. 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 you don't yeah. get to a tenured team to a team that this is their church where they're bought in, they're attending, they're tithing, they're yeah. inviting, mm-hmm. they're serving. Yeah. You don't get there overnight. Yeah. Right. No, and those of you that are boots on the ground in some of these right. new communities, yeah. man, invest the right way. Build your foundation yeah. on a bedrock mm. of doing it the right way, yeah. and don't look to an established location right. or tenured teams That's and good. think. This is what I'm going to do, and therefore I'm going to retrofit this system. Yeah, yep. that ain't going to work for you. Right. I promise yeah. you. Yeah. You have got to be a pastor of people first yes. Yes. before you want to be an implementer of systems. Yes, yes. Oh. that that's just. And so when you when you get that backwards, you find yourself frustrated. Yeah. yeah. Um. And 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 you want this for your team. And again, it's a noble thing, and, yeah. and we, we want it for your team. Mm-hmm. But you don't get there overnight. Yeah. You don't um, get there overnight. So I have a really cool story. Yeah. Pretty recently. Um, so talking about being consistent, um, with your presence, right. Showing up, Mm -hmm. um, but also like being consistent in, in communicating your purpose, right. Why are we, what, what do we do? We don't just gig. Right. Um, and, uh, there's a a member of my team who, um, not necessarily like, I'm not a Christian. I'm just here. You know, he's, he's not, not that vibe, but I never heard him express his faith before. Talk about God really. Um, well, again, just, you know, consistent, man, in my conversations with him, in our huddles, like, hey, here's the purpose of what we're doing. Um, here's here's what I believe God's going to do through it, you know? And uh, so a few weeks back now in our community um, near Midwest City, Dell City, um, there's a really sad, tragic shooting at mm-hmm. one of the high school mm-hmm. football games. Um, well, we pivoted last minute. So that happened on a Friday and uh, we decided, hey, this next Wednesday, instead of having youth, instead of having switch, um, we're going to have like a, a worship night for the whole church, um, man, just to just to instill faith, mm. man, in people, mm-hmm. um, just just to uh, uh, attack the fear that we know yeah. can mm-hmm. can be spreading right now. And uh, so we had that night, phenomenal night. Well, this team member who, like I said, I've never heard him express his faith before, texts me right after and says, Dude, being a part of tonight was one of the coolest moments of my life Mm -hmm. because I grew up in this community. Like this community is part of me and to see God moving in it Mm. was surreal, Mm. you know? And so that consistency of like, man, I I don't necessarily see him like reflecting the, the purpose and the deeper conversations that we're having, but, but all those things built to that moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I love it. Uh, Laura, I'm going to tell you right now, this one's going long. <laughs> um, we, I just want, we got to talk to. We got 12 minutes left on this one. On this, on this one card? Okay, we could do it in 12 minutes. We can All do right. this. 12 minutes. Uh, we got this. Uh, I just, it's, it's, this part is really important because yeah. we talk a lot of concepts, but it's the yeah. practicals yes. that yeah. I really want to get into. For yeah. sure. So uh, another common thing, uh, what do you do with a uh team member that is upset that they're not leading enough. Mm. We've talked about this. We talked about this, but we wanted to do a part two. So this is going to be part two of that conversation. Mm -hmm. What do we do with team members that don't feel like they're getting enough opportunity on stage, uh, leading, uh, songs specifically. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'll try to keep this brief because uh, I tend to be long <laughs> with my answers. But um, this is so crazy because I just I just shared with a, lot, a bunch of worship pastors about this very thing. Um, God trusts and equips us to be the worship pastors at our locations. Yeah. Um, that's why we're there. Yeah. The individuals that come on our team, while gifted, while skilled, don't have the, the mantle and the burden to lead in the same way. Mm-hmm. Because God has called us mm-hmm. there. That's not to say that they can't be very active contributors and, and come along and behind that vision. And so when you take into consideration the difference between leading a song from like a technicality perspective mm-hmm. and leading a song from a worship perspective, like those are two things. I can, I can appreciate you can execute the song with notes, but... From a scriptural context, like talk to me a little bit about what God's showing you in this song. Yeah. Um, you know, what from an exhortation perspective, man, what are you feeling in the room? What does that need to look like? So there should be a heavier weight that comes with leading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I personally think it should be harder. Correct. For I yeah. think you should be slow to give anybody other than yourself a microphone mm-hmm. to lead over thousands of lives and people yeah. without making sure that they're going to be as spiritually invested as you will be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That trust factor. Um, and so if there's, if, now if there's an entitlement thing, that's a, com- that's a completely different, and there, and there is that yeah. on specific teams. Yeah. But when you give something away, make sure that people feel the weight of it. And, and yeah. man, I, I, I want you to sing this song this weekend, but man, just kind of share a little bit about what this song means to you. And, and, and what has God done in it? And w- lyrically, what, how does this hit you? Mm-hmm. So that they know that there's an expectation for me to not just hit the right notes, mm-hmm. but to carry the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It means more. It should weigh more. And, and if that's the case, um, then, you know, being practical about finding ways and opportunities where you can allow individuals to lead at that capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't believe that anybody should just expect to be given a microphone and then speak over people mm-hmm. um, without the weight that comes with it. Mm-hmm. That's really good. A challenge I love is um, just asking them the question, obviously, as you were saying, Devin, like, what, what is your purpose in this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because we don't lead songs. We lead people. Right. Okay. Is that what you're getting on stage to do? Is, mm-hmm. is it to lead people? Mm-hmm. Um, cause if, if that's the case, then that, this, this weight of feeling like, well, why am I not singing this song? Man, that's taken off. Yeah. 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 That's good. That's good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It, usually in those situations, I, I have found a, a lack of contentment and a lack of value with where the person is right now. And so that's, I tend to steer those conversations there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's going on right now? Why? Why are you and not? I, yeah. Why is right now not enough? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's open that up. What's your thought processes? Why and why do you want this so bad? That's what good. does yeah. this mean to That's you? Good. And uh, a lot of the times it goes back to the comparison thing we talked it, about. Right. Last it does. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna lead. I wanna sing. I, but, well, but why? Why yeah. do you want to yeah. do that? Yeah. And it, and it normally it comes back to this identity thing. They don't am feel. Am I enough? Yeah. Am I enough? Yeah. Yeah. It's, like nine times out of 10, it comes back to that. Mm-hmm. And so I try to, um, obviously I, I allow the Lord to lead because there could be even something outside that's contributing to yeah, that narrative sure, sure. that I can speak to and help redefine. It might not even be you. Most of the time it isn't about you, something mm-hmm. that you have done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try to bring the, the conversations back to this thing of like, you are so valuable where you sit. Right. Let me tell you how I lean on you right now and what right. I see in you right now, what you do, like, yeah, yeah, and tried to to bring that in a positive light, you know. Uh, and I've, it, that happened with a guy on my team. He really wanted, really wanted more responsibility, more, 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 more that I knew he was not equipped for. Mm-hmm. Um, tried to instill that value, and thank God he was obedient to it. Mm-hmm. Because later on, he came to me and was like, "Man, thank you, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you for that." I yeah. realized, like, I actually wanted to do this other thing, and I was spreading myself so thin here and thinking that I needed to do this and and, and do it. But Mm -hmm. really I was like called to this thing, you know, so like it can go a couple of different ways, but usually there's this, there's this hole 
of, of lack of value in their heart yeah. and they're trying to do this thing because they think it will make them more valuable. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so and that's a whole, di- that's, that's a whole a, different, right. Thing. It's a whole yeah. other thing. So let's just affirm, let's bring the truth to it. Mm-hmm. You are valuable right now. Right. Why? Because Jesus died for you. Like lean on that, allow that to fill your cup because if you're going to think the stage is going to fill yeah. that cup, mm-hmm. I'm telling you it's not right. So it becomes more of this, I, it's not. I don't want just this list of things for you to go ahead and do. Yeah. I'm now like, no. I want you to feel yeah. really satisfied. I want yeah. you to be filled. Yeah. You know, and that's that conversation might lead to this. You know, this contentment that could lead them to that place. Sure. Praise God. Hopefully, you know. But regardless, we have to understand the value where we are right now. Absolutely. You know? um, any more thoughts on on that thing? No, it was really good. No. Okay. Last last scenario. <laughs> yeah, that I want to put in front. Um, I haven't gone through this specifically, but I've heard this happen in a lot of our campuses. We're coming off of an unhealthy leader. Hmm. The the culture in the green room is toxic. Hmm. Lots of fear, lots of cynicism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just running rampant. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're called to step into that space, how do you handle it? Because that's even true outside of Life Church. Sure. Sometimes, you know, we yeah. move to another church and there's yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. People are, are upset about how the the senior pastor's leading things and, and all of that, right? Mm. Yeah. Or like mm-hmm. they were really, really, really attached to the previous leader. Yep. Or that. Yep. And very cynical about the new. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's let's get into that. How do we Gosh, how do we come up with that? Now that's a that's a layered be a question. Whole episode, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could be. That is a yeah. layered question. Um when you when you think through uh, individuals who come in and um, it's a toxic culture and just the cynicism and just skepticism and all the things, um, this is why I said earlier, know your team. Yeah. Um, you have to, well, I call it profiling <laughs> in the mm-hmm. best way, though. Hey. Like, I want to I want to <laughs> know the individuals. And so typically there is clearly some hurt there. There's clearly yes. um, some some things that have happened, and and you don't know the story, um, but but c- get curious enough to want to know, mm-hmm. find out what happened, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and try to fill in the gaps with trust. But then also in that moment, you need to be a pastor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I also say that there are other moments where um, someone has made their intentions clear that this is just me, and this is this is this is just how I'm gonna do it, and yeah. and. There's spiritual authority needed in that moment. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Quick, swift and quick correction um, in a way that is loving. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Craig says it's filled with grace, mm-hmm. but also truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love you. Mm-hmm. I want you here. I want you to be a part of what God is doing. Mm-hmm. But here's what we can't have. Mm-hmm. And here's why. Because mm-hmm. there's there's so much in the balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there's there's both ends of that spectrum but it's incumbent upon the leader to figure out which one of these paths do I need to take with this and indi- with this individual not this group yeah, yeah. not this yes. group yes. because the group functions completely different typically you can find that there are specific individuals that are active contributors mm-hmm. yeah. to a group of dysfunction yeah. find out those find out who those individuals are yeah. and be really ready and willing to pastor them yeah. and or correct them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on this. I, I stepped into a you know yeah. pretty tough situation. Um, I want to be real quick and uh, yeah, just rapid fire. Um, be honoring. Now you don't have to fudge the truth. You right. can be straightforward. Yeah. But but don't don't be intentionally dishonoring to the you yeah. know former yeah. people, even if they left under bad circumstances. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know because what does it say about you? Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. That that does not give you credit it actually strips you that's of it, exactly you know? right um that's a huge thing uh don't be afraid of the team dynamics changing mm-hmm. um you know some people might uh might leave that might yeah. be the last straw for them mm-hmm. and of course you want to fight for them you want whatever is absolutely best for them for their walk with god that's what you want but you know don't be afraid if like you know what the team might change up some when yeah. i come in it might happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then don't don't be afraid of the elephant in the room. Like, address it. When yeah. there's tension in the room, let's talk address it. it. Yeah, let's yeah. chop um, it up. Yeah. Again, you will lose credibility if there's a tension in the room that that you as the leader do not uh, address. And everybody senses it. Yes. Yeah. And they're looking to you yes. as the leader to, to, to make a move. And, yeah. and when you don't, you walk out of the room and that doesn't happen. There's instant equity loss, mm-hmm. yeah. and you feel it. 
you know, yeah. and so win when you need to, step up when you need to, yeah. Um, yeah. have that authority when you need to, yeah. and 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 it will always uh, go a long way with your team. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's good. Thing. So I don't have like specifically a, I I didn't have to deal with like a toxic like really bad note kind of like coming in on the tails of another worship pastor, but it was a it was a culture that was very centered around the personality of the people mm-hmm. who were before me, mm-hmm. um, and so when I came in there was. Uh, there, I mean, there were plenty of people on the team who were open and, you know, willing to embrace me and all that. But there was also a, a subset that were very like hesitant and resistant to me being a different sure. person. Um, and I think that's, that's normal. That's to be expected. And so what you were talking about before, like there are going to be some people who leave and that has to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, something, some things that I learned in that season, like you have to be both very gentle and very aggressive at the same time about getting to know people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't like force yourself on someone, but you also can't like wait for them to be come to passive. you. Yeah, you have yeah. to be very yeah. intentional about like wanting to get to meet mm-hmm. with people and getting to know them. There are going to be walls that you come up against um, in a toxic situation, especially mm-hmm. like if, if there was, you know, their worship pastor left on a bad note, like you're going to come up against walls and you have have to like get behind those walls and that mm-hmm. only happens if you're aggressive mm-hmm. but gentle yeah. <laughs> in your approach and so just like it takes time to get around that but um one thing i i learned in that season the hard way in some cases was if there is like a toxic member on the team or a toxic mindset on the team if you don't address that quickly yeah and clearly it will infect and then there yes. will be more you have to deal with down the road. Trickle down effect. <laughs> yes. I, there was not so much on the worship team, but on the tech side, there was a lot I had to deal with because I didn't deal quickly with some unhealthy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, everything's good now. <laughs> things are great. Uh, things now. are great now. Again, I get to reap um, the harvest. But She's so right. yeah, there was, there was a lot in it. If there's anything I could say to like a young worship leader, worship pastor stepping into a new culture, it's like, be quick to address Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lack of health. Um, Even if you don't feel equipped to do it, even if you feel like you're going to lose equity with people because you cut a person from the team or told Mm -hmm. someone they couldn't serve in a certain capacity, it's, I I promise you it's better to lose a few than to lose many because Mm -hmm. you did it. Because of Mm -hmm. your inaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your unwillingness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is part of, this is part of it. Mm -hmm. Leadership is hard. It's Mm -hmm. very hard. If it were easy, everyone would do it. And so, it, it is incumbent upon you to step in and have the hard conversations mm-hmm. to figure out. And I said it earlier, the grace and truth piece. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, not everything has to be dramatic. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. No. It, it doesn't have to be an argument it, it, and it shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It should be clear, but it should be yeah. direct and then also laced with with love. Yes. Mm-hmm. And here's why. Here's yes. why this matters so mm-hmm. much to me. Mm-hmm. Here's why I want it to matter to you. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you 99% of the time, Delivered with that way, delivered in that way, the individual will one, they'll feel some type of way. They'll feel likely convicted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they'll have a decision to make. Yeah. Right. And you can't make that decision. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. I'm responsible to tell you the truth. Yes. And, and let you know where we need to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And invite you to be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. I want you here. Absolutely. And and the other thing is like you can bring all of that to those conversations and those they might yes. still be combative. Sure. And you might have to have a really uncomfortable conversation. Right. Sure. Right. Um don't be so intimidated by that conversation that you right. don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that was my biggest pitfall like in that season. And um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's worth leaning into the discomfort yeah, and trusting is. that God's mm-hmm. going to fill gaps when they're needed. If, if a team member is like, even right. if it's a critical team member, yep. yeah. um, just trust God in having those yep. conversations. Yeah. I remember Gabe gave me, um, some amazing device when I, uh, advice. Hey man, a device, <laughs> device. Uh, a secret device. Yes. Yes. Device. What yes. did it do? Uh, to correct the, culture? The correct <laughs> culture button. Yes. <laughs> um, that was the best device. Uh, no, some amazing advice uh, when I first stepped onto my current team, which was, um, hey, when you're stepping into an unhealthy environment, it is so easy to get caught up in oh man, all these systems are so messed up. I got to fix them. Man, our planning center template, it sucks. I Horrible. really got to clean it up. Yep. You know, our, our pro presenter setup, man, it's so bad. I can't believe they did this. Let me spend hours a day for the next month cleaning this up. And it's like, no, number one priority, people. Yes. yes. People, yes. Yeah. not yes. the systems, yes. not that's the good. tech, not, that's you good. know, yeah. the people. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. That's really good. Um, 
my prayer for anybody stepping into a new thing, new church, new campus, new team, is that you are burdened and you have a mission for that place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That you, that God has put something inside of you, something in your story, some revelation, some, some milestone on your faith that you want to see happen there. Right. And you feel burdened for that. So that no matter what the climate of the culture is, your directive is clear yeah. mm-hmm. and where you're going and you feel confident that you know where to bring this team and you will quickly realize who's with you and who is not with you. 100%. Mm-hmm. Y'all just got to keep moving, yeah. right? You have all those individual conversations, but all of those conversations need to be to the end of whatever God has put in front of you, That's yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and if they are not with you, that is okay. That's okay. Right. Yeah. That's, That's okay. okay. And you know what? That's actually great for them. That's exactly right. And that can help with the intimidation of having those hard conversations that if, if we are not aligned, it's not that I don't want you with me, but I want you to be in the place where you feel more sure. connected and aligned to. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. you need to go and explore that yeah. thing. Yeah. You need to go. Not because yeah. I hate you now. You need, you need to go and find that place. Yeah. Yep. This is because God works in that too. There's he a story. Sure it, yeah. It's not just about your thing, right? God is also writing a story in that person's Absolutely. life. Mm-hmm. 100%. And this might be the catalyst to help them move Shift to a place where yeah. they grow and learn mm-hmm. yeah. and move on. Yep. We trust that God works in all things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All things together for good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the hard conversations, even if it's messy, even if they cuss you out on, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> on the way out yeah. the door, yeah. that's a moment in their walk that God is orchestrating yeah. and yeah. will work for yeah. good. And so um, just it, it goes back to like we are pastors first. Like we, we follow God, right? Yeah. He mm-hmm. brought us here. He keeps us here. And here's yeah. what it boils down to, Rob. It, we will be held accountable. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. For the leadership that we've been given, mm-hmm. the lives that we've entru- we've been entrusted to steward, the worship environment that we get to help mm-hmm. create, yeah, mm-hmm. our teams collectively, if our in inex- if our inaction mm-hmm. compromises the integrity of that team, we will be held accountable for yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Let that be the the push you need to have the crucial conversation, yeah. Yeah. to correct the yeah. action, to not ignore it again, mm-hmm. yeah. to not just let just just you've got to make sure that you're stewarding that you're caring for it, mm-hmm. that you're caring for it with such grace and humility, yeah, and accountability, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good, man. I think that's a great place to call it. Praise Come on, yeah. Lord. So good. So, so good. Uh, thank you all again for, for yeah. joining us, Stephen. Yeah. What an honor. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. my gosh. Come on. Stephen, can you pray for us? Pray Absolutely. Us out? Yeah, man. Father God, thank you so much for this conversation, God, everyone who's listening right now. Um, God, I just pray a blessing over them. Um, God, so many people listening to this are probably dealing with uh, a, a bigger mountain, God, in in taking over a team and leading a team than they probably expected. Mm-hmm. Um, and God, I, I just know that your grace covers them so yeah. completely, mm-hmm. God, yeah. yes, um, and that your power is with them. Um, Father, I, I just pray that they feel the wind of the Spirit, God, moving yes. them yes. even into those crucial and difficult conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I, I just pray that they feel the confidence, God, that they are exactly where you've placed them, yes. God. And, and so even though there are difficulties, even though they may be at the very beginning of a very long journey, um, God, that's the journey that you're about to be on with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, Father, I just pray that, that you would use this conversation to bless them, to equip them, uh, and to send them forth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs>